Hey guys, this is Brian over at Obedia, and I'm going to show you today how to use Native Instruments Battery Plugin uh, with your electronic drum brain and electronic drums at home. Uh, now, this isn't actually as hard to do as it might seem. In fact, typically, most of your drum brains that you're going to find are going to be essentially plug and play uh, with most drum plugins that you find uh, out out uh, that are commercially available. Um, but there are a couple things that we need to do in order to make sure that everything works. So one of the first things that we need to do is, of course, make a new kit in um, battery. And the, the next thing that we need to do is we need to double check our MIDI settings and battery. So to do that, we just click on File, click on Audio and MIDI Settings. This is going to open up the Audio and MIDI Settings window. I'm going to click on the MIDI tab, and I'm going to make sure that my MIDI device, my MIDI uh, that is attached to my audio card in my PC, I'm going to make sure that its status is set to On. That's very important, and as long as it's on, it should receive MIDI notes. After I've done that, battery should immediately be able to talk to my drum brain. Now, you may find, however, that you are unable to immediately get your drum brain to work with battery. Uh, and sometimes that happens, and what generally that means is that we need to change some of the settings in the drum brain. Um, now, what we can do is we can check what notes are currently assigned to the cells in battery. Now, each cell in battery requires that a MIDI note be played in order to launch the sound that is in that cell. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to add an, a, a, a kick drum real quickly to this cell. So now I have a kick drum on this cell, and when I click on this cell, I can go ahead and click on the Cell tab. And this is going to tell me what key range is required to be played, what notes need to be played in order to make this sound play. Now I can see what notes those are by just scrolling through the rest of my cells. You'll notice that the next one over is C-sharp 1, and then the next one over is D1, the next one over is going to be D-sharp 1, and so on and so forth, just moving up as if I was playing a regular MIDI keyboard. So what this does is this tells me that each of these cells is going to be assigned to a different MIDI note. So now all I need to do is I need to make sure that the MIDI notes being sent out from my electronic drum brain correspond with those that need to be played in battery in order to launch the sounds, and I'll show you real quickly how you can do that. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you real quickly here how it is that you can set up the Roland TD-8 uh, to work with Native Instruments battery and uh, it's fairly quick and easy to do uh, because in general it should just plug and play. So the most important thing is if you flip around and look at the back here of the, uh, the TD-8 and pretty much any other drum brain, the most important thing is that you are plugged into the MIDI out port and you want to run the MIDI out into the MIDI in on your sound card or audio interface, anything like that. And then uh, I don't have all of my drum pads plugged in right now, but what you will find is that um, if you are working um, with just about any drum plug-in, typically all of these various uh, inputs that you've got on the back of just about any drum brain uh, that designate the kick, the snare, things like that, those are always going to link up automatically for the most part to the, uh, the settings in the uh, drum software that you've got. So in my case, I'm just going to plug the kick in right here, and you can kind of hear it over on my computer. It's already registering the kick. And so now if I tap on my pad, I've got the kick drum happening right there. Um, and one of the cool things that we can do if we need to change the MIDI note and things like that that is being sent from the drum brain into the software, um, it's typically a little bit easier, like I say, to change it on the drum brain than it is to change it uh, in the software because that can get a little bit messy. But the cool thing about the Roland brains 
is that you can uh, pretty quickly and easily pull up the instrument that you're working with by clicking here, at least on the TD8, click on the instrument button right here, which is F1, and whatever it is that you tap, is going to immediately change over to the instrument that you've got. So if you take this out and you switch it over into the snare, this is going to immediately change you over to snare. Um, and you can do that for all of the pads as you scroll through. So that's a really quick and easy way to go through and pick out uh, the instrument that you're working with. And then you can edit that instrument by hitting edit and then clicking on MIDI. and um, here you can change the note number uh, that is being used and that makes it really easy to just real quickly uh, do some changes to what's being sent out here and to do that all you need to do is just click on the button underneath MIDI and then that's going to bring up the MIDI edit screen and then on the MIDI edit screen uh, here all you need to do is in the note listing you can just turn the scroll wheel and this will just change the note and changing that note will cause for different things to be played usually in the software um, so you can hear right here I'm just doing some changes some very basic changes as I scroll through the notes and that's changing things over on my battery software and so if I change these notes to match up with what the battery software is set up to play back that'll make it a lot easier to get the pads to play back everything that I need to play. Once you've done all those setups in your electronic drum brain you should find that you're able to simply play a pad on your electronic drums and that it will immediately play uh, the battery plug-in and you will immediately be able to start jamming on your drums. Now the last thing that you're going to want to do of course is you're going to want to save your drum kit and in order to do that all you got to do is click on file and go ahead and click on save kit. Once you've saved your kit, you'll be able to recall your kit anytime and play it with your electronic drums. I hope that this has been useful to you guys. As always, feel free to get in touch with me at brian at obedia.com or on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor. Take care.